This episode is brought to you by the Boneyard Huskies Club. The Boneyard Huskies Club empowers athletes while providing UConn fans with access to exclusive community, utility, and rewards. The Boneyard Huskies Club is excited to announce the next collection of student-athlete collectibles, which grant club membership privileges, will feature UConn men's basketball players in drop on January 9th, 2023. For more information, go to BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. That's Huskies with a YZ at the end. BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. All right, I think we've got the most anticipated Big East matchup of the year coming on Saturday, and it's only fitting that it ends the year. I mean, we do have Georgetown DePaul tonight, but I I, I think this might top the cake, Adam. Uh, we've got Adam Baum. Uh, he's from the Cincinnati Inquirer joining us back again on the podcast to help preview the Xavier game. So, Adam, welcome to back to the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. So uh, just to to start here, I know there's been some change at Xavier, obviously, most importantly, with the head coach. Give me, give us your thoughts on how this team has performed so far this year. And, you know, if they've kind of lived up to the expectations you've had for them heading into the season. Yeah, I think I think on one hand, you look at them and you say, yeah, there was a change at the top. Uh, Travis Steele's gone. Sean Miller's back. But then beyond that, it's like they they had a lot coming back. So yeah. I personally had pretty high expectations for this team. I thought look, last year didn't go the way that you want it to. You got this new, old, experienced head coach coming back, and you've got a roster that, that's proven that you can compete and win some games. I would say where I'm a little bit surprised is kind of on two fronts. And number one, that's been the transfer that they added. They knew they needed a point guard, and they mm -hmm. went out and got Sule Boom from UTEP. His ability, I mean, believe it or not, way back in like late September, early October, there were people outside the program wondering if freshman Desmond Claude was going to be the starting point guard. Cause we just didn't know what we yeah. were going to get with Sule. Um, you know, he, it's a new program. It's a new coach. It's a new system. It's a step up in competition. And there were these questions like, Hey, is he going to be able to rise to this level? Is he this good? Can he play here at this, at this level? And he has answered that and then some. He's just been sensational. He's won them a lot of games just because of his ability to close out games at the free throw line. Um, so that, that's been surprising. The other thing that's surprising to me about this team is that I think they're, they're elite offensively. Mm -hmm. And I know UConn is going to be the best defense that they've probably faced all year. Um, but I, I did not expect them to be this far along offensively in the way that it looks and the way that it feels and the way that it operates. So I, I, I'd say that I'm pretty pleased with where they're at um, with those two surprises taken into consideration. I know you mentioned there how a lot of the roster, you know, came back heading in, you know, into this season. What's been the biggest difference with some of those pieces and guys that have come back from last year to this year? Yeah, I think – Sean, the one thing Sean Miller's really done well is that he's gotten guys to understand what's required of them, what he wants them to do, what is their role on this team within his system. And I think, you know, there's a, a few very clear examples of guys that last year tried to be something else. And this year, they're very much taking those directives and it's benefiting the team. It's benefiting their playing time. So I think that, that that's been the, the biggest thing with, with this team is that these guys know what's expected of them, and, and I think it's freed them up to go out there and execute it in a way where they're not wondering if, hey, am I supposed to be doing this or am I supposed to be doing that? I think they know very clearly what's, what's being asked of them on a game-by-game mm -hmm. -game basis. So looking at that roster, maybe for some of the fans who haven't tuned in and caught a lot of Xavier this year, take us through the roster a little bit in terms of, you know, maybe a couple of the guys to, to be on the lookout for in this game on Saturday. Yeah, uh, we already talked about Sule Boom um, last night at St. John's. He played all 40 minutes Whew. and he only had one turnover. Impressive. He's really good, really good at drawing fouls, getting to the foul line. He's shooting the ball incredibly well from the outside. Um, he's definitely going to be a guy who's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. So he's, he's certainly got to probably be at the top of UConn's list. 
And then beyond that, Colby Jones is having a great year. He's Xavier's three man. He's their best on ball defender. <clears throat> I think he's really improved his perimeter shot. So he sort of added a three point arsenal into mm -hmm. his mix, but he still loves to drive it. He loves to get downhill. And then the other big thing with this team is the way that Sean Miller's gotten Zach Fremantle and Jack Nungy to play together on the floor at the same time. They do a ton of high low. Um, Fremantle and Nungy, I would say that the the majority of their assists this year are to each other. So it's like Jack Jack coming out on the perimeter. Yeah. Uh, and you know Jack's Jack's a guy who can shoot the three. He's also a guy who's proven this year that he'll throw it in there to Zach Freeman and let him go to work. And they do that interchangeably. And then the other guy that, that's really stood out is Adam Kunkel, who probably gets the shooter tag um, applied to him a lot. He's shooting it really well from the perimeter this year. But he's another guy that, like, really makes their offense go incredibly instinctual, can get downhill, is great passing. Um, so I think w when those five guys, they're starting five are on the floor – that's obviously when they're at their most dangerous. Um, all five guys can score it. All five guys can pass it. Um, and they do a really good job of getting all five of those pieces involved. And then they really only go seven deep. Now, they went a little deeper than that at St. John's, I think, because of the pace of the game. But you're looking at a guy in Jerome Hunter who comes off the bench, and, and he'll, play, he'll play the three at times when Colby needs a break. He'll play the four for Fremantle. Um, and, and he's like a six-nine – Six nine spark plug. Um, he's been rebounding it really well this year. I think last night he had 10 rebounds at St. John's and oh, wow. six of them were offensive. So he's really bought into to his role this year and he's given them something off the bench that they really need. And then the last guy is freshman Desmond Claude, who's from New Haven, Connecticut. Yep. Um, he's he's a point guard. Been really impressed with him. And I think he's come a long way at both ends of the floor. He does have a tendency to foul a little bit defensively, so he needs to get that figured out. But I like his ability to to get into the paint and attack the rim and create his own shot. I think for a freshman, he's uh, he's way way beyond where I think people thought he might be at this point. So that's in a nutshell, kind of what you're looking at from Xavier. I, I think there are a couple of interesting points you brought up there to be on the lookout for in this game, and obviously. UConn's got the bigs to go up against Xavier there, whether they're going to throw out Sonoga or Klingon and what that matchup is going to look like. And then UConn's not afraid to go nine deep. So kind of testing that depth against the somewhat lack of depth that it seems like Xavier might be throwing out there. Yeah. And that that's, you know, when you look at UConn, it's like they're, they're a complete team, man. They can play offense, they can play defense. And then, as you mentioned, they have the guys off the bench that they can bring in, and there's not there's not a drop off when they yeah. do that. So, you know, Sean Sean Miller said last night after the game that in order to beat UConn, they're going to need to play a, a really great game on Saturday, and that that sort of goes without saying. But I am sort of interested in how this game plays out in that, you know. Xavier's a little bit unique in that they like to play two big guys together. I haven't seen too much of UConn to this point. I'm going to try to watch a little bit of them before the game on Saturday, but it, it you know, styles make fights is yeah. the old slogan. So I think that this one will be interesting. And if there is, if there is a, an area that I'm going to keep an eye on, it's that Xavier has not been great defensively this year. Um, I think they are getting better. They were better last night outside of some like transition stuff that St. John's got away with. Mm -hmm. but Xavier's going to need to play defense and they're going to need to rebound to beat UConn. Um, I don't care how good they are offensively. Xavier, uh, Xavier can score points, but against teams like UConn, against the best teams in the country, you have to be able to get stops and you can't get punked on the glass. So yeah. that's pretty much what this one boils down to for me. Yeah, and I think that leads nicely into what I was going to ask. If, if UConn's looking to exploit a thing or two in, in Xavier's game, what, what have been the biggest weaknesses that this team has shown so far? And it seems like it, it might start on the on the defensive end there. Yeah, I think the simplest answer to that is at times they have trouble guarding the ball. And that the one exception to that is Colby Jones. He He's their best guy at guarding the ball. Um, I'm, I'll be curious to see who he gets stuck on because normally it's like, either a team's best shooter or their best all-around scorer. Like mm -hmm. he was on David Jones last <clears throat> night for St. John's. 
But then, like, Sule Boom, Adam Kunkel, both incredibly talented and gifted offensively. But if there is a knock against them, it's that sometimes they can't guard the ball. And they'll get driven by, they'll uh, they'll fall asleep on a shooter and give up a clean look from three. And, and what ends up happening to Xavier is they play this pack line defense, which is essentially a help defense. So it's yeah. a man-to-man <clears throat> And you're helping off the ball if a guy gets beat. Well, when some of the Xavier's guys get beat off the ball and other guys have to come over and help, it really breaks down their defense. Yeah. If that happens all the time, it's a hard thing to overcome. It's okay if it happens here and there. But when it's happening 10, 12, 15, 20 times a game, your defense is constantly being broken down. And if teams know how to make the right play out of that situation – you can, you can be susceptible to giving up easy points. Um, the other thing in this game is Jack Nunji is really, I think, the only – it'll be interesting if Xavier decides to double Sonogo. Yeah. So they played, they played Indiana earlier this year, and they decided to double Trace Jackson Davis, who still went for 30 points against him doing that. So – I, maybe that scared them. Maybe maybe they're not comfortable doing that, and they're just going to say Jack. Jack is really, in my opinion, the only guy Xavier has that can guard Sonogo. Mm-hmm. So if he gets in foul trouble or something like that, like what do you? They don't really have another big man that really matches up with Sonogo that well. So um, that'll be another thing that I think UConn might want to try to uh, exploit a little bit. It's like, hey, let's go right at Nunji. Okay. See yeah, on him. And Xavier's probably going to do the exact same thing. I know they Sonoga. have Klingon. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't be shocked if Xavier goes right at Sonogo and says, you know, let's see if we can get you in some early foul trouble and see how that changes the game. Yeah. No, I, th- I think there are a lot of interesting matchups when you look at this game that are going to ultimately be the deciding factors uh, in this one. I know it's uh, – Centos Center is always pretty crazy. It's New Year's Eve. I know it's a noon game, but uh, expecting a pretty uh, raucous uh, environment there on Saturday. Yeah, I just I just got an email, right? Like literally I was clicking on on your Zoom invitation and an email popped in and said it's sold out. They're actually I think they're selling some standing room only tickets. Oh wow. Which, which will be the third game this year they've done that for. They did it for Indiana, they did it for West Virginia, and now they're doing it for the Huskies. So it'll be it'll be robust in there. It'll be crowded. Yeah, no, I, I know this is the game everyone's looking forward to. It should be a, a fun one. We got two ranked teams going at it. Uh yeah. What, what you want in biggies basketball yeah and for xavier it's like i wrote about this after the game last night last night was super big that you found a way to beat them because your next four games are yukon nova creighton and marquette yeah and i i, I think you i think yukon has the same stretch just in like a different jumbled order there different so order like, yeah yeah that's interesting. Oh, they, they, they got Providence thrown in there. I think that, yeah, yeah it's Providence, Creighton, because they just played Villanova last night. So, yeah, yeah they go Providence, Creighton, uh, Marquette, I think. So, yeah, interesting how uh, all these this teams are getting, the, getting the gauntlet gauntlet early. I know. This is the, the meat of the Big East right here in order. Um, yeah. I'll be interested after we get done. I wanna, I'm going to watch that Providence-Butler game just because those are kind of two other teams in the Big East where I'm like, what do, what do we have here? You yeah. Know? What can one of those teams do? Yeah, so. no, but, but Butler was interesting because uh, when, when UConn played them, uh, you know, they hung with them for a bit and then UConn went on one of their yeah. runs that they kind of tend to go on in each of these games and, and put the game out of touch, uh, out of reach there. But I, I, I'm curious, uh, you know, I was at the UConn game last night, so I didn't get a chance to watch a ton of Xavier St. John's, but uh, St. John's is always an interesting matchup for UConn. And I know there's been some debate on, St. John's and their legitimacy this year, given that they played a relatively soft uh, non-conference schedule. Yeah, I thought I thought Xavier. I mean, Xavier was up eighteen in the second half. Yeah, and then it came in. It got into a situation where I think like St. John's, you know, the way that they play that high pressure. Yeah. Um, Xavier got worn down a little bit and, and started turning it over and missing shots. And St. John's clawed their way back in, and I give them credit, but. Um, like Xavier had their best rebounding game of the season last night against St. John's. I think they had 16 second chance points, oh, off wow, okay. 12 offensive rebounds. They out rebounded St. John's pretty handedly. 
Um, so that was big for me because the rebounding has been an area where it's like, okay, you guys are playing two bigs and yet you're struggling on the glass pretty consistently yeah. here. So I, I've been waiting for them to turn that corner a little bit. And then St. John scored like 24 points off turnovers. And I would say 12 to, to 16 of those points came like on breakaways where uh, St. John's beat Xavier. So it was like, yeah, that's, that's kind of what the game evolved into. Um, It'll be interesting. Cause you can pressure to Villanova a little bit when the game got closer and Villanova kind of started turning the ball over, play a little bit of hot potato with it. So it'll be interesting to see if, you know, they look at that film against St. John's and try to do a little bit of the same. Yeah. Let me ask you is, uh, are, are there any, are there any chinks in, in UConn's armor? Are there any, any areas where you think they're susceptible? It, it's going to be hard because both Villanova and, and even Georgetown, like game plan pretty well for UConn. I mean, Villanova basically took Adama Sanogo out of the game for, for the majority of it. I mean, I think he only ended up with six or seven points yesterday and I mean, UConn was, you know, they, they missed three or four wide open threes in that game. And it could have been another double digit victory for them, which is kind of crazy when you think about, you know, you shut down a player, everyone's, you know, kind of thinks is the best player on the team uh, and they're able to go all out. Um, UConn's had a little bit of some scoring droughts from time to time, um, but they'll make up for it and go on a 15 to two run. Um, so, way out of it. Yeah. So it, it's gonna, It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, especially it seems like Xavier wants to kind of play up and down a little bit too. So if they're going to get into a little bit of a track meet, I think it gets a little bit interesting uh, to see how that plays out. I, I feel like UConn probably wants to play somewhere in the middle of that versus how Villanova played where they really wanted to grind out each possession and, you know, and play that type of style. So it's it really, I, this is the game I've kind of had circled is the one that's been interesting to me, especially going on the road as well and, and kind yeah. of getting that, that real test in this one. Yeah, and, and to me, it's like, I I understand how good UConn is, and and I don't think necessarily, like, I don't think Xavier's bad compared yeah. to UConn. I, I definitely think that they can play with them, and, like, Xavier, Xavier hasn't necessarily gotten pushed around by anybody. They lost to Duke, they lost to Indiana, they lost to Gonzaga. They were in all three of those yeah. games. All three of them came down to the end. But to me, it just feels like this is going to have to be a game for Xavier where they just they shoot the ball really well if they're yeah have yeah. So. And, and I mean, like that's the thing from like a Villanova perspective. Again, they had a perfect game plan yesterday and still lost by eight. I mean, it, it yeah. probably went like it, if you're Kyle Neptune, like it, as well as you could have hoped for for the most part in the in how they executed, but just uh, just not enough. I've I've got a wrap with this one for you. Have you had a chance to go back and watch any of the Sean Miller uh, mic'd up part of yesterday? That was the first thing I did when I when I got back <laughs> from New York was I threw on the the DVR that I watched. He's uh he's intense, man. Yeah, I, I think they got to mic up him and Hurley next year. I think I think that's the that's the game they got to choose. So. Well, I was uh I was talking after the game to John Paquette from the yeah. Bridges. And I was like, well, who, who do you go to next? You know, because you think about it, it's like you've now you've done Miller, you've done Mike Anderson, you've done Greg McDermott, you've done. Did they do uh, Shaka last year? You did Shaka. Time? You've done uh, Stubblefield. So it's like, I have a feeling that like, and I, how, how have they not done Ed Cooley? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Ed, Ed would oh, be UConn Providence one. would be a good one. <laughs> UConn Providence would be a good one. Um, yeah. might have to. They might have to age restrict that one though. Uh, it <laughs> might be tough. <laughs> Early, uh, but you know, it's like I also think it's not necessarily something that a lot of these guys want to do. Yeah, no, um, I don't blame them. You know, I was kind of like talking to people at Xavier and they were like, and I think honestly, if you watch the game or, or you go back and watch it, they, they ended up doing something that they've done in the past. They sewed their plays into their waistband. Okay. I, I don't think Sean Miller wanted to be calling out his plays for everyone to know what they are. Yeah. No, that's so interesting. They were, so they were calling out numbers and guys were looking at their waistband. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's a weird thing, but, it was fun getting to like see what he's like inside a huddle, see what he's like in the locker room, talking to his team. Yeah. No bad shots, right? 
<laughs> you saw that clip, huh? I I I saw that one at least. Uh, but uh, Adam, I, I really appreciate you hopping on again. This is a fun one, and uh, we'll have to try to reconnect uh, at the end of January before the uh, the rematch. Yeah. We got what about a month before I, I make my my yeah. long return to stores. Yeah, yeah. And if it's anything like the the crowd was last year for Xavier, which it, which it should be, I think it might already be sold out. Uh, it's gonna be a good one. You know, I'll never forget last year's game because after the game, we got hit with like a snow squall. Oh, do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was in a lift taking me back to my hotel, and my lift driver, like we couldn't see anything, oh. he pull off on the highway. <laughs> And we just had to sit there and wait for it to pass. So I've never gotten caught in one of those before. So yeah. that was cool for and, me. and you got that. That was the book night ejection game too, right? So you got a little oh, bit of everything in yeah. the trip to stores. That was a great, a great day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam, <laughs> enjoy, thank you for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy the game and uh, happy new year. Yeah, you too. Thanks.